Hello friends, it's Lisa. So today I thought it'd be a good idea to do a bit of a book unhaul. I think it's been maybe a year since my last unhaul and just last week I was kind of looking at my shelves and realized that there's probably a good amount of books that I can take off and get rid of. I have pretty full shelves behind me so I'm going to try and make some space because I have some books stacked around just kind of everywhere so I'd like to be able to get some of those books on my shelves especially ones that are like a part of series I'd like to be able to put my series together but yeah I thought it would do a bit of an unhaul I haven't like gone through my books yet I thought it'd be fun to go through all of the shelves with you and kind of unhaul together there's also some books I'm not quite sure if I want to get rid of so I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments and also I can kind of talk it out through this video and see if I want to get rid of it or not but yeah I think that's it we're just gonna go through all of the shelves and I'm gonna start getting rid of some things I'm not gonna do like a super intense unhaul I'm not trying to like get rid of a ton of books. I just know that there's some that I definitely could get rid of. And also, I think I might sell them on Pango Books. It's an app that I've seen a lot of people using recently. I might do that, but I need to figure out all of the like logistics of selling and shipping things out and stuff. So I do have an account. I think my handle is just with Lovelisa, but I'll have it linked in the description if you want to follow me there. So when I do post them and do start selling them, you'll know. But that's like a maybe. I might be doing that. I need to figure everything out first. <laughs> but I thought I would just let you know that I do have that account. So if you want to check there for any of these books that I'm unhauling, that's the place. Plus I have books that I've unhauled in the past that might show up there. So all good things. Okay, I've talked enough. Let's get into the unhaul. <laughs> so I don't know honestly how much you can see on camera, but I'm going to start with this shelf. Any shelves that you won't see, I'll put in like a picture or a little overview of the shelf so you can see kind of what I'm looking at. But I think I already know one thing that I'm going to get rid of off this shelf, except it's in a stack of books. So this might take a minute. <laughs> I think it's time to say goodbye to the final John Green book that I have. I read this when it came out a couple years ago and I thought it was fine. I think I gave it like three stars. I think that's the highest I've rated a John Green book other than The Fault in Our Stars, which I read when I was like 13 and loved it then. But I think looking back, there's some things in that book that I don't think I necessarily agree with now. But this is probably like my favorite out of the ones I've read from him and it was only a three stars. So I think it's time for it to go. I know like this book handles anxiety and OCD and just some other like mental health related things that I think could, you know, have an impact on someone else or mean a lot to somebody else. So it's not really doing much just sitting on my shelves where I am probably never going to revisit it or reread it. And I also just didn't like it that much. So I think this would be better off in someone else's hands. I think I'm gonna have two piles, the definite unhaul and the maybe pile because I have problems with commitment, but it's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm also, I think, excuse me, Barb. I think it's time I get rid of Again But Better by Christine Riccio. Absolutely no hate to Christine at all. I don't want it to come across like that. I just, this book just didn't really work for me. I think I read this like at the start of my booktube channel and I think I kind of rated it and talked about it a bit more highly because I was new to YouTube, new to booktube and also like it's literally a booktuber's book and I already had a hard time like talking badly about books that I didn't enjoy at the start of my channel. Never mind someone who was on the platform and I just I didn't really love it that much. It just didn't really work for me. It honestly felt like a very similar book to Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins and I hate that book so it wasn't enjoyable kind of reading it again essentially. I read that same story basically again except I don't know if it was better. Anyways, <laughs> I had to say it. I had to make the joke. Anyway, and it's just a nice edition. It's the like Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. It's signed too, which is quite cool. And I don't know, it just doesn't need to be on my shelf anymore. I think I kept it for so long because I wanted to support a booktuber. I wanted to support Christine, but I just don't think I need to have it on my shelf in order to show my support, if that makes sense. So I think it's time for it to go. I also up there do have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and I am contemplating getting rid of it but I don't know I don't know if I can let go of it yet I know like now like years after reading it the things people have pointed out about that book and like things that I don't think I realized were as weird as they were when I read it for the first time definitely don't know if I would like it nearly as much if I like read it now but I loved that book and it meant a lot to me when I read it originally when I was like 14 or 15 so I'm gonna keep it for now 
but maybe someday it'll show up in an unhaul. <laughs> All right, I think my first maybe is gonna be They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. So I didn't hate this book. I think I gave it four stars, but I also gave like everything four or five stars. If you look at my Goodreads, any book that I read from like 2019 and before, it's probably not very accurate. <laughs> but I would say this is probably more like a three star. Like I thought it was very fine. It did make me cry, but I don't think that's necessarily anything about the book. I think that says more about me being an emotional mess. <laughs> I will cry over things even if I don't like them or I just don't care. If something is emotional, whether it's happy or sad, I will cry regardless. It's super fun being me. So I did cry reading this book, but honestly, like, it just didn't, I don't know, like, it was fine. It just didn't do much for me. And I know it's being adapted. I don't know if it's a show or a movie or what it is. And I'd be curious to watch that and check that out, but I don't think I'm ever gonna need to revisit the actual novels. So I might get rid of this. I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile for now, but we'll see what ends up happening at the end of the video. <laughs> I definitely think it's time to get rid of these. We have Girl Online, Girl Online on tour, and Girl Online going solo, all by Zoe Sugg. <laughs> And I think it's time for me to get rid of these. I really like, I had a fun time reading these when they were coming out. And also again, like no, no hate to Zoe. I still watch her vlogs. Like I still like her videos and everything. I think it was just, I really loved Zoe when these were kind of coming out. And I think I felt like I had to read them, had to love them, had to keep them on my shelves because I loved her. And that's just not the case. I can still enjoy Zoe Sugg's videos and like her without having her books on my shelf, especially because I don't think I'm ever going to revisit these. I mean, the first one of these was really cute. The whole like premise of these books is this like very like normal girl falls in love with a famous person, which like when I was 15 or 16, 17 maybe, <laughs> when I was that old reading these, that was like my ultimate dream. So they were fun. They were cute. I just don't think I need to have them on my shelf anymore. I think everything else on this shelf I'm gonna keep. Uh, actually, watch out for the plant. <laughs> I think this might go in my maybe pile. This is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I read this in October of 2020, I think. <laughs> and after finishing it in October of 2020, I thought I was gonna continue on with the series, but it's now been like a year and a half and I have yet to pick up the sequel. I think I'm still intrigued slightly, but I think if I were to continue on, I would just like listen to the audiobooks or like get them through my library or something because it is an interesting premise. You're following Stevie who attends this like private school and in the 1930s when the person who like founded this school had just kind of opened the school, his wife and daughter, I think, like went missing. Like they just basically vanished and no one's been able to like figure out what happened to them. It's like one of the biggest like unsolved mysteries and Stevie is determined to figure out what happened because she's really into true crime and like she goes to the school basically to figure out what happened. And while she's there, there's like a different kind of mystery happening in the present day. And I didn't really so much care about what was happening in the present day, but I found the mystery from the 1930s with the original like founder of the school. I found that so interesting and that is not solved at the end of this book. You'd, I don't think you find out until the third book in this series because I think it was originally supposed to be a trilogy and now I think she's releasing like a fifth book and the idea of reading that many I just don't know if I care <laughs> but I like kind of want to know what happened with the original owner and his family and what happened to them so I don't know I might get rid of this because again like I'm not going to if I continue on with the series I'm not gonna buy the physical copies and I think I only got this for like five dollars at Barnes and Noble I think it was at like the Barnes and Noble cafe for like a five dollar deal which I think they do online too so anyways I think I might get rid of this but I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile I just I don't know like I said if I continue on with the series it will be the audiobooks or the ebooks or something through my library all right now we can move on to the next shelf I'm gonna go to this one next and I I think it's time for these as well I'm just gonna get rid of all of the YouTuber books right now, I guess. I think it's also time for me to get rid of these. This is Zenith and Nexus, both by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. If you were paying attention to booktube at all in 20, is that 2018 when Zenith came out? You would know that this uh, generally did not go over well. <laughs> a lot of people really didn't like it. And I was kind of one of them. I was really upset about it though. I. Sasha was like one of the first booktubers. She actually was the first booktuber that I kind of found out about and watched. And I remember like from like 2016 to 2018 when the book was released, watching videos of her and Lindsay like 
writing the book and talking about it and talking about their characters. And I was just so excited to read something that I had seen them talking about for years. And so I was really excited and unfortunately I didn't love it. And then I also have the sequel because I feel like even up until just recently, I was one of those people that like if I started a series, I had to finish it. I couldn't leave it unfinished and I don't know why. <laughs> Especially if I didn't enjoy the first one, why would I read the second one? I don't know. It was just my mindset and I'm working on it. But I did pick up Nexus and read it. And to be honest, Nexus was not as bad as Zenith, I don't think. At least from my memory. I read this in 2019 when it came out. So it's been a few years, but I remember it like summarized what happened in Zenith really well and then it was a little bit more interesting and the characters were a little bit more intriguing and the actual story was a bit better. Um, it wasn't like my favorite thing by any means. I still think I gave this like a three which like that probably was a bit generous. So it wasn't great but it was better than Zenith and I feel like honestly you could read this without reading Zenith and you wouldn't really miss anything. So yeah I am sad about this. Like I'm still sad about it and it's been four years? Is that the correct math? 18, 19, 20, yeah, four years <laughs> since Zenith came out and I'm still sad that this was a bit of a disappointment, but it was. And again, like absolutely nothing against Sasha or Lindsay. I was very upset that these did not work out for me, but I think it's time to get rid of these. <laughs> I clearly have a problem getting rid of books by people that I like was a fan of or like watched their content or whatever, but we're working on it. I think it's time for me to let all of those go. <laughs> Do I get rid of this? Because I really did not enjoy this at all, uh, which is so sad because I had just read The Hunger Games for the first time before this came out. I was so excited about it. And then it was what it was. I think I'm gonna keep it for now, but I might get rid of this at some point. <laughs> okay, this series, let's let's discuss. I have the Matched series by Ali Cobby. So this is Matched, and then we have Crossed, which is the second one, and Reached, which is the third one. I, uh, I think it might be time for these to go. I don't know if I can get rid of this though. I'm such a sentimental person, and the thing is, like, I read this book when I was in eighth grade, so I was 13? That was 10 years ago. Okay, anyways. <laughs> but I read this when I was 13 and I absolutely loved it. And I remember like I read the sequel, wasn't as into it, and then the third one came out and I never read it. And then like, I don't know, like five or six years ago, reread the first two to finally read the third one. And it's not good. Like this is not a good series in my opinion. I didn't enjoy it. Matched was like fine. Crossed is probably one of the worst books I've ever read and Reached wasn't much better. So I think I'm definitely going to get rid of the first two. Crossed has like, it's gone through it. It's very kind of gross. It has a ripped dust jacket. Uh, it's seen better days, but it's what this book deserves. <laughs> so I think I'm going to get rid of Crossed and Reached, the second and third one, but I think I'm going to keep Matched because I'm sentimental and it's nostalgic and I just, I can't get rid of it yet. Plus I did a book report on this book in eighth grade when I read it. The book report is still in the book. <laughs> That's what like you put any sort of memory attached to anything and I can't get rid of it. So I I simply think I think I'm gonna keep this but I might just like put it somewhere else like I might not keep it on my shelves. I actually think I have a Sarah Dessen book that I read in middle school that I haven't been able to part with yet either because like uh, it's just listen and for some reason that cover it's so ingrained in my memory and I just remember really enjoying that book even though I can't remember a single thing about it but it's on my shelf it's behind the books on the top shelf and that might be what I do with this because I'm just not ready to let go of it yet because nostalgia but I don't recommend the trilogy but I think I'm gonna get rid of these two. Yeah, gonna get rid of these. I don't have as much like sentimental value attached to these two as much as I do with this one. Plus they were bad. So <laughs> it's time for them to go. Uh, okay, everything else I think is staying. This is where my copy of One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston goes in this little empty space. And I'm reading that right now. So I'm not going to unhaul it. All of these are good. These are like, I have Death Note, which is my one manga that I own. And then like a bunch of graphic novels. Um, obviously not gonna unhaul any of those because I love them, especially Heartstopper, We've Been New. <laughs> then I have some classics that I don't think I'm going to get rid of either. I haven't read most of them, so gonna keep those. <laughs> oh, you know what? I might actually... Why do I want the books that are in stacks? 
and at the bottom of the stacks. I Why do I make things so difficult for myself? Okay, I have two book of the month books. I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. This is If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman. This was the first book of the month book that I ever received or picked out because I got a like 12 month subscription as a gift for my sister and it was great. I was very excited to pick my first book and this was that one, uh, September of 2019. And I read it and I didn't really like it that much. I think I should have known from the title If Only I Could Tell You that miscommunication is going to be a big part of the book and I, I've come to the conclusion I don't mind miscommunication if it's done a certain way and if it's not like the entire plot if it like if there's other things going on on top of it but like the whole premise of this book is like these sisters I think don't share anything like they have the secret from each other or something from when they were younger and then they just don't talk to each other until they're like adulthood and like that's the whole premise is that they didn't tell each other something so therefore this book exists and it just didn't really work for me so I think I'm gonna get rid of this even though this was my first book of the month pick and it was very exciting I just I'm never gonna reread this <laughs> I also think I'm gonna get rid of Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia I definitely want to read more books from this author I think in other genres I might be more interested in their books. I've heard a lot of great things about some of their other books, but I just don't think that this one was for me. It's kind of a gothic horror novel, I guess, and I just don't know enough about the genre, I think, to have appreciated this when I read it. It just didn't really work for me. There were some things that I just didn't like, but I also think I just didn't really know much about the genre and everything and just didn't really work for me. So I know that this, though, is a very popular book and a lot of people do like it, so it could go off to a better home, but yeah, just didn't really work for me, which is so sad. I remember being so excited when this was a book of the month pick uh, because my friend TB really enjoyed it. It just didn't really work for me, but I, I recognize it's probably mostly a me thing. There were some things in the book that I just did not like in general, but I do think it was more of a me thing. But yeah, I think I'm gonna let, let go of this one. <laughs> and then the rest of that shelf I'm going to keep. There's like another empty space where some books are missing. That's where my copies of Daisy Jones and Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid are. My sister is currently borrowing borrowing them to read them. So when I get them back, they will be placed on the shelf and I will be keeping them. <laughs> and then we have my Marissa Meyer shelf and my Cassandra Clare shelf, which I will be keeping all of these books. So imagine if I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of all of the books on these two shelves. No. <laughs> Do you know how much money? <laughs> no. <laughs> now moving on to this shelf. Uh, imagine if I got rid of Eddie Lou. It's tempting. I really did not love that book. I think it's one of those books I need to reread and revisit knowing what happens so my expectations are a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really wish I was one of those girlies that was obsessed with Addie LaRue, but I'm not and it's very sad. But I think I'm gonna keep my copy for now. I did tab certain parts. I don't know if you can see the tabs, but I did enjoy parts of it and I definitely want to revisit I think at some point. So I shall keep it for now, but it's on thin ice. <laughs> um, I think I might get rid of this. I think I'm gonna get rid of Red Queen. This was a gift from one of my friends and so I always feel weird getting rid of books that were like given to me as gifts because I'm like this person picked this out and spent money on it and picked it out for me and I'm gonna get rid of it. Like it just makes me feel really ungrateful and I feel bad about it but I really just didn't like this book. <laughs> I think my friend had a good like idea when she picked this out for me because they knew that I enjoyed YA and it's like a fantasy dystopian kind of vibe, which makes sense when you think of what I read, but it just didn't work for me. It was like a super basic YA dystopian. I think if I had read it in 2015 when it had come out, I might have enjoyed it a little bit more, but for now, like when I read it in 2021, I think I read this last year, it just, just didn't do anything for me. Also, like everyone loses their mind over like a plot twist that happens towards the end of this book, and I don't understand. <laughs> I did not find it surprising at all and like I just don't think it's that dramatic but that's just me anyways <laughs> I think it's time for this to go because I just I don't see myself continuing on with this series if I do again I'll get the books through my library but I don't imagine that I'll be continuing on I still appreciate it as a gift though this is why I don't know what to do I don't want it on my shelves but I also don't want to get rid of it I don't know I don't know what to do let me know what you do with books that were given to you as gifts help a girly out you know This is tempting. <laughs> I think I'm gonna keep them for now. As stupid as it sounds, like I have all of her other books, so I kind of want to keep them, but I could see these being unhauled in the future again, like, again, like Addie LaRue. 
they might be on the chopping block in the future. Speaking of Leigh Bardugo, has anyone read this and what are your thoughts? I know Therese read it and me and Therese have like similar tastes most of the time and I think she gave it like four stars, like I think she enjoyed it, but I feel like I haven't heard anyone else talk about this and I've had this on my shelf since 2019, I think. I think this is the book, the longest book that I've had on my shelf on read, I think. So I don't know, it for some reason has never called to me in the past like three years that I've owned it. So I would love to know if you've read it, your thoughts, or if I should maybe just unhaul it. But this also was a gift, so I don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> this is another one. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. A book that people really love, a book that people really hate, and one that I just felt very meh about, very middle of the road. I read Carrie Maniscalco's other series and I read it like when they were coming out like years and years ago and I enjoyed it then. I don't know if I'd feel the same now, but I do have like fond memories of that series. But this one just did not make me feel the same. I just didn't really enjoy it as much. Um, but I didn't think it was like terrible. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm going to continue on with the series and I probably could just read them through my library if I wanted to, but I just haven't decided. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this, so I think I'm going to keep it, but again, one that might show up in a future unhaul. Feel free to like, even the ones I'm not unhauling, that I'm like holding up as like potential future unhauls, <laughs> let me know your thoughts and what I should do because I clearly can't make decisions for myself. <laughs> And then this shelf, I think I'm going to keep everything. The only series on there that I'm kind of like meh about is The Raven Cycle, but like I enjoyed them. I think again, if you look at my Goodreads ratings, they're probably all like four and five stars, which is not how I feel about that series, but like it was fine. Maybe again in the future I'll unhaul them, but I also think that might be a series that might be good to revisit as well. So we'll see. But yeah, I think everything there is good. And on this shelf, I definitely want to do something about that series. Y'all know the one. This shelf, I I kind of unintentionally made it my like problematic shelf. I don't, ooh, it's a mess. She, I didn't do that intentionally. It just kind of like ended up being those series and those authors and I'm like, that's choice. But I do think, I do think I'm gonna get rid of this. This is Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive. It's absolutely stunning. The actual cover art is stunning. Under the dust jacket, the actual hardcover is really pretty. There's art on the end pages. Like it's a stunning book, but just not that stunning on the inside. I really did not like this book at all. I don't understand why Carry On really needed to continue on. I thought Carry On as a standalone was fine. I was excited when this was released because I did really like Carry On, but reading this now, don't think it needed to continue on. And I think the third book has come out and I've heard literally nothing about it. So that's not promising. Probably never going to read it. So I'd rather just think of Carry On like as a standalone. And I think I might get rid of this because I just, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> but I think that that's all of the books that I want to unhaul today. I do think that there are some books that might show up again in future unhauls, but like I said, I'm a very sentimental person, like almost to a fault. <laughs> and I just I have a hard time letting go of things, which is silly, but I want to keep most of these things for now. But there are definitely some books and some series on here that I could see myself getting rid of in the future. But let's just go over everything that I did unhaul and also talk about the two maybes that I ended up with and see what we want to do there. Okay, I was just taking a thumbnail with the stack of books that I'm unhauling and all of them fell to the ground. And let me tell you, that was very loud. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just going to quickly go over the books that I am unhauling before we get into my maybe pile, which is only two books, but I'm going to go over the ones I am definitely unhauling first. So I'm definitely going to be getting rid of Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, Again But Better by Christine Riccio, Girl Online, Girl Online on Tour, and Girl Online Going Solo, all by Zoe Sugg, Zenith and Nexus by Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings, Crossed and Reached by Ali Condi, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman, Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, and lastly, Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. So definitely a good stack. I think I have more than I was anticipating. I was like maybe thinking like a handful of books, but I'm happy that I have a decent amount of books I'm getting rid of. So for the two that I'm deciding between, I have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera and Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. 
And I think just like looking at them and like thinking about it while I was doing the rest of the unhaul, I think I am going to get rid of They Both Die at the end. I just don't see myself ever revisiting this or rereading it. And like I said, it is being adapted into a movie or a show. I can't remember. I think it's a show. So I'll check out the show for sure. I will watch it probably, but I feel like that'll be the most I'll want to revisit this exact story. What to do about you? <laughs> I think I might keep this for now. I think because I still do have somewhat of an interest in the rest of the series. I think I'm going to keep this for now and see how I feel about the sequel and go from there. If I really just don't like the rest of the series, I might unhaul it. But what if I end up loving the sequel, loving the third book, and wanting to have the actual books in my collection? You just never know. So, <laughs> so I think I'm going to hold on to this for now, but I think also like time will tell if I end up getting rid of this too. If I never end up picking up the sequels, then I think it might be safe to say that I can unhaul this. But I think now that there's like still a little bit of intrigue for me, I think I'm going to keep it for now. But yeah, that is my little unhaul. How many books am I actually unhauling? <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 books. That's not bad. That's not bad. I thought it was going to be like maybe 10 books that I was unhauling. And there's even some that I feel like I could get rid of at some point. So I'm happy with that. Definitely have some space on my shelves to put in some new books. Finally kind of move around those stacks of books that I have over there and put them on my actual shelves. Get some series all together. And I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy to have made some space on my shelves. Definitely let me know your thoughts on Truly Devious, mostly like the rest of the series, what you think of them and if I should continue on, what I should do with that copy and any of the books that I mentioned as like potential unhauls in the future. Definitely let me know your thoughts and don't forget to check out my Pango bookstore down below because I might be selling these on there. I also like this stack of books is books that I unhauled I think in my last unhaul and I also have books that I unhauled in like one of my first videos on my channel. So I think there will be a decent amount of books put on Pango Books if I end up using that. So make sure you follow me there. But yeah, I think that that is going to be it for this video. Very happy that I unhauled a decent amount of books. I was not expecting it to be this many, so I'm very happy about that. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.